But what happens when rational belief is confronted with pure faith? America is one of the most scientifically advanced and also one of the most religious societies on Earth. I've come here to find out what science can tell us about faith when it comes to speaking in tongues. Reverend Jerry Stolfus is a fundamentalist Christian who believes the Holy Spirit can speak through him. Within moments of speaking in tongues, he seems normal again. So what has just happened? I think it is my spirit talking. And so when I pray in tongues, I am believing that the Holy Spirit is interpreting for me what I don't know how to say or don't even know what I should say. Because words God. themselves are inadequate in that moment. Words are inadequate. They, and the whole human uh, body of wisdom and knowledge is inadequate to explain or describe what a person is feeling. That's why we're still trying. So my understanding would be, uh, and this comes from Romans 8.26, it says that the Holy Spirit makes interpretation for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And it's talking there about those um, pre-verbal times when there is no way to express what you're feeling. So in a sense, it's, it's a very primitive, regressed emotional state, is what you're hmm. saying. Am I hearing you correctly? I don't think so at all. No? No, I don't think you're hearing me correctly at all. Help me, help me I think it is. I think it is a, an admission that there are some things language doesn't touch and therefore looking for some other way to work at that expression. There's no evidence that there really is any message there. Now, what that means is that then whoever is doing the interpreting can make anything of that message that they want to. And typically, the way it's interpreted is in terms of the particular version of the religion that's being preached in that particular congregation. Mm. So all of that would suggest that although it may look to the those who believe that this is some kind of evidence of being touched by God. In actual fact, I'd say the evidence very strongly suggests it isn't. So, is this all just a figment of Jerry's imagination, or is there actually something physical going on in his brain which would enable him to speak with the voice of God? Normally, scientists shy away from any exploration of religious phenomena for fear of their colleagues' ridicule. Neurotheologian Dr Andrew Newberg is trying to bridge the gap between the rational and the faithful. We've been studying a large number of different religious and spiritual practices and experiences using different types of brain imaging. The whole purpose is to see the variety of changes that go on within the person when they are engaged in different kinds of practices and especially when we see kind of the broad variety of experiences that people have that they consider to be religious or spiritual. We're trying to tap into that and try to understand how those experiences really affect a person and how they affect them not just subjectively but objectively as well by studying their biological responses. Today Dr. Newberg is researching what really happens inside the brain of someone speaking in tongues. He first injects a radioactive trace into Jerry's bloodstream and then asks the pastor to speak in tongues. The radioactive tracer records brain activity which can then be tracked in a scanner. Explain to me what is going on inside Jerry's brain. Um, what we're seeing on this slice here, these are slices through the brain, uh, as if we could just kind of made a cut here and pop the top of the head off and you're looking down on the scan. And the way to look at this is that the areas that have the brightest amount of yellow uh, are considered to be the most active, and this is a measure of blood flow. Okay. The idea about how the brain works in general is that the more active a particular part is, the more blood flow it gets, the less active, the less blood flow it gets. And what we have found in, in our people speaking in tongues is a drop of activity in this frontal lobe, that part of the brain that would normally make them feel like they were in charge of what was happening to them. So I think that this at least supports the experience that they have, that whatever is coming out of them is not what they are in charge of. 
Und das ist immer rund, ich schalte die Daten, ich schalte die Daten, ich schalte die Daten, ich schalte die Daten. Does this prove that he isn't making this up, that this is a real experience he's happening? Well, it proves that neurologically there's something that's really happening that is associated with the kinds of experiences that he has. Now, if you're asking, is it a real experience, meaning that when he says this feels like the spirit of God moving through him, I don't think this scan disproves it. I don't think it proves it. All it is showing is that when he has that feeling that God is actually speaking through him, that the parts of the brain that are his normal language areas are not being turned on. Right. So it's not, it's not him faking it, at least in the sense that he's not purposefully trying to produce this sound. Uh, so in that sense, it's not faking it. And I said to him, I said to him, Dr. Newberg's research to date does appear to show that there is something going on in the brain of believers that is not the product of deliberate decision making. But that's a long way from saying this is proof that God is responsible. So are you the scientist who's going to prove the existence of God? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't have a pre I don't have a previously arranged agenda as to whether I'm trying to disprove or prove God. I'd love to be able to do one or the other, um, but um, I, it, for me, I think that because we know so little about how we as human beings experience reality uh, and understand that reality, and because we exist in this infinite universe or almost, um, that I think it's very difficult for anybody to ultimately be able to do that uh, to say one way or another, just because. Everything that we think and feel and believe about the world is processed by the human brain. Unless we can find some way of essentially escaping that brain to see what is actually out there in the world, um, we may never get to that, to, to, to that knowledge. Dr. Newberg believes that Jerry is not just pretending to be able to speak in tongues. Whatever is actually happening, his brain is registering a real event of some kind. But how far can this go? Can simple faith overturn the laws of science? Can miracles happen? I want you to give the Lord the biggest shout of hallelujah. Come on. Benny Hinn is one of the world's most popular and charismatic preachers. He reaches an audience of tens of millions in over 190 countries, and his church receives over $100 million in donations and by selling DVDs like this one each year. He too claims that God speaks directly to him. At this rally in India in 2004, he drew a crowd of one and a half million. During the performance, the crowd became aroused by the sophisticated light show, the music, the excitement, and the offer of simple but miraculous solutions for all of life's problems. That was impeccably choreographed. The music suddenly came in as wow. Very, very slick, the whole operation. Clearly, he's a showman. He's a massive, he knows, he's a huge showman. I mean, yeah. this is a rock concert. This is, I mean, now the child is crying. He's completely overwhelmed. Why are you crying, baby? Why it may be crying? mere showmanship, but does it do any harm? Well, it depends how far you go with the idea that God is reaching out to yeah. touch you. Well, I mean, basically, faith healing goes back to ancient times. There have always been people around who claimed that they could perform these miracle cures. I mean, the best example, of course, would be Jesus in the Bible. But these people have always been around, and healing has always been taken as some kind of indication of being touched by the power of God and presented as evidence for the existence of God and that if you have enough faith, then you can be healed. Nice. Oh, that's glory. Why did she just fall over? That apparently is called being slain in the spirit. So it's meant to be a kind of power of the Holy Ghost. Okay. It's going to fall backwards. Child. Well, come on, give the Lord a mighty hand. Come on. Part of the message is about just believing in God and having faith in God and the idea that when we die, that's not the end. There is an afterlife. Now, that is a, something we all desperately want to believe. The evidence doesn't have to be that good to convince us because we want to believe it anyway. Pastor, he has a steel rod in his neck. He was going to have to wear that contraption for the rest of his life. But yesterday, God began to work the miracle. No independent medical evidence is ever presented to back up the claims of miracle cures. 
Depending on your beliefs, the sick and disabled brought out on stage are either swept up in the moment or genuinely being touched by God. I suspect that's not really a very good thing to do if you don't know what his medical condition is. What we'll see time and time again is there's no proper follow-up on any of these cases. These people have the excitement of the evening, they have these miracles, alleged miracles, paraded out in front of them, but there's no follow-up. Nobody goes back six months later to say, has that cancer really gone? Have you really been cured of this? Benny Hinn refused to take part in this program, and he has also consistently failed to provide any valid scientific evidence to prove that any of the faithful are genuinely healed at his services. You deserve the glory. If you, if you believe that you, know, you have a particular religious worldview and it helps you to make sense of the universe and gives your life meaning, fine. Mm. There's no, I can't kind of argue, I don't happen to agree, but I'm not going to take issue with that. If you're making claims that this has real effects in the real world on real people, mm -hmm. then, OK, show me the evidence, convince me. And the evidence just isn't there in the case of miracle healing. The young man had a tumour in his back, and tonight, when you called out somebody being healed, the tumour disappeared in his back. So maybe this is where I demonstrate my own prejudice. While I strongly support the idea of a relationship between the brain and the body, mind over matter, the sight of sick people putting themselves into the hands of someone like Benny Hinn confirms for me how desperate people can be attracted to irrational solutions based on blind faith. But of course it's not just the simple, the desperate and the gullible who subscribe to belief in a world beyond provable fact.